22-year-old Lloyd Perkins lived in Seaside, California in 1995. On September 21st, Lloyd was fatally shot by an unknown man on Amador Avenue in Seaside. The Seaside Police Department worked their case aggressively in the 1990s and a lot of information came in, but there was never enough to pin down the suspect. In the early 2000s, the case was looked into again. The detectives made a little bit more headway and started to pin down people who were in the area at the time of the crime. In 2010, Seaside Deputy Police Chief Nick Bores was working on a different case. During his investigation, he met Lloyd Perkins' mom, Gloria. She told him that her son's case is still unsolved. He promised her that he would not forget and he would do everything in his power to make sure the case gets solved. Recently, the Seaside Police Department joined the newly created Monterey County Cold Case Task Force. In April 2021, 49-year-old Anthony Randall was booked into the Monterey County Jail in connection to the case. Nick Boris said that people involved in the case got older and they were more willing to talk and share what they know. The current detectives followed up on some leads and they were able to identify several additional witnesses and get more information at really locking the suspect had they arrested. Some of these people had been interviewed in the past and things didn't go very far, so they really did some good follow-up on it and were able to corroborate what some of these witnesses were saying and we are very confident that Mr. Randall is responsible for taking the life of Lloyd Perkins in 1995. Nick Boris lived up to his promise. He was able to tell Lloyd's mom the good news that an arrest has been made. 15-year-old Lori Nesson lived in Columbus, Ohio in 1974. She attended East Moore High School. Nesson performed well in school, becoming an honor student during her academic career. On September 27, 1974, she attended a high school football game. After the game was over, she went to a house party. Just after midnight, she started walking home. Lori Nesson would sadly never make it home. The next day, her body was found on the west side of Reynoldsburg, Ohio, in a ditch. Her clothes were scattered across several miles. An autopsy was done and it was determined that she passed away due to asphyxia of undetermined origin. This meant that investigators did not believe someone took her life. The family pleaded with investigators to reopen the case and they finally did in 2019. A new coroner decided to review the case. He determined that someone definitely took Lori Nesson's life. In December 2020, 10TV aired a broadcast on the Lori Nesson case. That night, a viewer called Reynoldsburg police with information that could finally solve the case. The woman said what happened to Lori was very similar to what happened to her cousin, Karen Adams. In March of 1975, 17-year-old Karen Adams left her home in Whitehall, Ohio. She told her parents as she was going to a girlfriend's house to pick up some clothes she had left there, but she actually planned to meet up with her boyfriend at a supermarket. Karen's body was found the next day in a ditch about six miles from her home. She had been assaulted and strangled. There are a lot of similarities between the two cases. Both Karen and Lori were teenagers, found in a ditch and passed away within a few months of one another. Karen's case was solved however. In 2011, Robert Meyer was arrested in connection to her case and convicted in 2012 as his DNA was found at a crime scene. Meyer passed away just a few years after being imprisoned. There were DNA samples from two different men found at Karen's crime scene, but investigators were unable to identify the second man. Karen's cousin believed that Meyer could be responsible for what happened to Lori Nesson as well, and that is why she called investigators. In 2021, DNA testing was done to see if Meyer was indeed responsible 
for taking the life of Lori. It was discovered that there were also DNA from two men found at Lori's crime scene. One of the DNA samples matched the DNA of Robert Meyer. Investigators believed that the other DNA sample could potentially belong to Charles Weber. He was a friend of Meyer and they both served time together in prison. Weber passed away in 1992 and he was cremated. Investigators had to get a DNA sample from Weber's son. It was then confirmed that Robert Meyer and Charles Weber took the life of Laurie Nesson. It was also discovered that a second man involved in taking the life of Karen Adams was in fact Charles Weber. Investigators believe that these two men committed more crimes and are currently investigating it. Detective Chuck Clark from the Franklin County Sheriff's Office had this to say, I always had a feeling these two guys were responsible for more and what they were caught for. They would drink, drive around the city wherever and they would approach girls and young women that were by themselves. When this happened in 1974, this didn't just happen to me and my mom. This totally changed everything for all of us. When they told me they got hits and that they knew who did it, um, for the like the next five minutes, I, I really don't remember anything. I really hope that this opens the doors for other cases, for other families that have no answers. Nobody, nobody should ever have to wait 46 years. What she must have gone through that night, there's no way to know.